Welcome to Crazy Gamer Models. I am the Crazy Gamer and I do models. It is Bismarck week, but we're building the turpits. As always, I put the links in the front of the video so you can join me on social media and our giveaways and all that good stuff. Right now, there's a giveaway for a model grab bag going on. It is currently at $17.50. So if you subscribe and get me to 200 subscribers, it will go up to $20. You can vote on what's in that grab bag on my Patreon page. But now, let's get started on some Bismarck information. At 0600 hours on Saturday, May 24th, 1941, the Royal Navy was dealt one of its most shattering blows. The 42,000 ton battlecruiser Hood was destroyed after an action lasting barely 8 minutes with the Bismarck, the largest and most modern battleship in service with the German Navy. Three days later, after the most celebrated sea chase of World War II, which involved no fewer than three British battleships, two battle cruisers, two aircraft carriers, and nine cruisers, plus numerous destroyers, Bismarck was brought, brought to bay, reducing it to a blazing hulk and finally sunk. The career of the most feared German warship was terminated merely nine months after she was commissioned. Yeah, she didn't last very long. By the Treaty of Versailles of 1919, German was forbidden to build warships displacing more than 10,000 tons or carrying armaments of a caliber greater than 280 millimeters. Three so-called pocket battleships were built more or less with these restrictions between 1929 and 1935. But capital ships capable of rivaling the heaviest units of the major naval powers was not laid down until 1936. These ships, Bismarck and her sister Tirpitz, did not have the benefit of continuous deployment and improvements as do, did those of native, foreign navies and were fundamentally adaptations of the design for the Baden class battleships built during World War I. Despite this handicap, battleships F. Bismarck and G. Tirpitz proved to be formidable warships and although very much lacking in the protection afforded to their internal communication systems, a defect which was proved to be particularly disastrous for Bismarck, their vertical armor, machinery, and armaments were excellent. So that's a little, instrument and a little history of the Bismarck there, but that is not what we're working on today. Today we're going to work on the turpits. My wonderful wife has gotten me these ships here. And hold on one second here. I was just that was messed up. Okay. Hey, John, what's going on? JD Rose. Yeah, I was on the wrong video, so I couldn't see my comments. So, anyways, my wife went to an outlet store, and she found me, and there's the outlet store, Ollie's. She found me three of these ships. She got me the Turpits, the Hood, and the Yorktown. So, I figured it's Bismarck week. Why not build the sister ship of the Bismarck, the Turpits? It is in one 350th scale model. So... We're going to go ahead and just build this live today, see how it is. No upgrades, none of that good stuff. This company is Lindbergh. It is made in the USA, which is something you don't really see on model kits. Uh, does it have a... Oh, it is number 70827. I have not opened it yet. I have no idea what's inside. So, 
we are going to check this out together and see what we get ourselves into and see if we can't just put this whole thing together. Okay, so wow, detail on the hull. I see that right away. Wow, that's nice. And all one top piece. So we'll take a look at that there. Not too many sprues, just looks like two sprues there. And then we have a paper and some flags. So let's get the box out of the way. And it looks like just a couple pages of instructions here. See, so we're going to work on a superstructure here. Mount some guns. So we'll get into that. I don't have the instruction camera anymore. So that is a work in progress. Hi, Crazy. When is it Yorktown week? Oh, hopefully very soon. I'm hoping very, very soon is Yorktown week. So I'm waiting on two more things for Yorktown week. And once that happens, also Yamada week was supposed to be this week. But again, I'm waiting on something for that also. So let's take a look at what we got here. Free rubber band. You can't beat that. Let's take a look at this hull. Wow. It's got all the plating on the hull. I don't know if that's to scale, but you guys can see that. I don't know how accurate that is. But that's that's an interesting interesting detail that you don't see on a lot of the other ships. There you go. Very rough little little bit of design there. He's a little bit of cleanup that with a sanding stick all one piece of this a little bit of warp on there but it should fit it should fit no problem it does have location marks so we should be able to get that together with no issues I'm going to put the overhead and the side camera on and then we have some flimsy sprues here. We got a little boat over here. The guns. A lot of flash, but you know, who cares? It was dirt cheap. We got two float planes. And then we have the main guns over here. So interesting. Looks pretty cool. Looks like we'll make some progress on this today. I, would, I don't know if this is going to be over two streams or one stream, but we're going to find out. So I'm going to set the hole up there, move this screw over here, and we're going to get started right now. So we need part one and two of the superstructure. That would be okay. Literally, I don't think okay. They are numbered. Okay, I was gonna say they didn't look numbered, and that would have been a pain. So we're gonna cut off this one and this two. Super flashy, so let's see if we can get a good build on here. Just a little bit. There we go. Now I'm not painting these, this is just gonna be a fun little little live stream build here. Is an odd spot for a sprue location. Oh, very odd spot for a sprue location. So, so sometimes doing these these quick build kits can be fun. You know, you don't have to put a lot of effort into them. You just kind of build and go. Just to hone your skills. Just kind of, you know, 
practice and sometimes you get these kits that are a little bit rough around the edges and you can work on some of your other skills of gap filling and things like that but like I said these at the outlet store on clearance they're normally $40 kits and I believe my wife paid $13 so you know for a you know a kit to do in between stuff like a little weekend build or something like that it's a good it's a good buy and I was super excited when she found them so I figured we could do these on a few live streams just in between some builds and then definitely during York, Yorktown week we'll build the Yorktown so that'll be interesting already some mismatch issues here but we're going to make it work that joint for a minute here that's a tough seam right there trying to get this lined up in all the important spots that don't get pieces covered up over it these stacks lined up here If you're a perfectionist on models, yeah, this would drive you crazy. But I know that this is not going to be perfection. I'm sure those models, model kids. Yeah, probably. Model kits, not kids. You don't want to hold a kid in a hot warehouse. These were made in the USA, not China. So. <laughs> I know what you meant. That's funny. But. Yeah, our Chinese kits, they keep the hot kids in the warehouse. The kids in the hot warehouse. There we go. Alright, so we got that part done. Huge gap right there. But that, that gets a piece on top of it. So, all right, so we need part three, the bridge, part three, the bridge, which is right here, part three, the bridge, and then we need the top bridge, which is number four. top stack what is that it's eight no we need eight too we need eight and we need fourteen well they are definitely just jumping around the spruce here jump well I think they're jumping around the spruce fourteen why can't I find fourteen oh because it barely looks like the picture so Alright, so we have three, which we're going to sand that right there. Sand a little bit of injector pins in there, right there. I just realized I cut all those off without being a camera shot. I'm sorry about that, but it, it's cutting parts off the sprue. So this is going to go on there like that. Okay, well that's going to need some glue, a lot of glue, so we're going to use some Mr. Cement Deluxe and just brush it on. That is a lot, I don't want to use my extra thin on that. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. We got another section of the bridge on there. So, just a little bit. It's extra thin in there. Okay, so that's on there. Let's close up these glues so I don't spill them and have more comedy on the channel. So, we have a gun stack platform on the back. And then we have this. Odd placement on some of these sprue gates. Some of them are fantastic, and some of them are a little bit of a a problem. Now I don't know what is this Lindbergh models? Yeah, Lindbergh models. I've never I've never heard of Lindbergh models. And if anybody else has, please let me know. Because I'm not aware if they how they are. So if you if you've built with them before or whatnot. So So far, I mean, for a model kit, it's not too bad so far. We'll see what we get into fitting some other parts. You like said the sprue gates are weird. Maybe a starter model for a kid or, you know, Christmas present for someone who likes models, but, you, you know, you don't know what to get them. You don't know what they have, and I'm pretty sure they're not going to have these. So, plus you could use these for bits. Um, I have a plan for a 1 350th scale scrapyard, ship scrapyard, and also a 1 35th scale scrapyard that I plan on making for a club that I plan on joining soon, my local model building club, and they, you know, do theme builds and things like that, and I think I'm going to use all my pieces and make a 135th scrapyard, and then a, when I get all my ships done, if there's any pieces left over there, or scraps of these kits, you know, show one of these wrecked in a scrapyard being tore apart. That would be um, pretty cool, in my opinion. Put on the top stack there. So. And. So, I mean, I could make all this fit a lot better, but. I'm not going to. Like, if you look in there, you can see below that that stack. There's a there's a gap in there, but you know, there's not much. You know, I'm not going to spend hours upon hours making this a perfect fit on this kit. So this is just basically for a live stream and some entertainment. So we're going to take our bridge top bridge piece. So the giveaway is going good. It uh, We've got to 179 subscribers, which has bumped up the grab bag to, to 1750. Um, not too many people have voted in the poll. I'm actually going to post a link to the poll. There's a link to the poll. If you go to that poll and you scroll down, you can vote on the first item in the giveaway. It is to my Patreon page. You don't have to sign up for that. It's just the method of doing the polls that I know how to do. So you guys can go there, vote on what you want to see as the first item in the giveaway, which that will be announced on Friday. 
if your item doesn't get picked, like what you want doesn't get picked, there will be a chance for that item to be in there again. So you don't have to worry about that. They're going to be, this, like the second runner-up will be able to be picked at a later date in another set of two, three, or four items. And, you know, by picking cheaper items in the beginning, you're going to make the giveaway last longer, which means it could have a chance to raise up the 20 20. Hey, Love Minis, how's it going? Which could get us up to the $20 or, you know, $22.50, $25 if I get the $250 subscribers. So, you know, the, the kit could be pretty cool. It also can contain a lot of stuff if you pick lower cost items or, you know, you could start picking like a more expensive item like the liquid tape, which I think is like $3. Or the thinner medium which is on there now and that's used for thinning Vallejo paints like I use it for the model colors it works pretty well this is like 325 but if you go with like the 8 piece sanders that's maybe like 3 or 4 dollars and then but if you do pick the applicators which is in the lead now it's only like a dollar 25 for the applicators so it'll be a lot left over so you guys pick what you guys want to see in the grab bag kit so we have this first step is done the first step is done let's mark it off because we did something okay so now we're going to please look over painting instructions before going any further yeah we're not painting it sorry guys so what does that arrow mean Okay, an arrow repeats the steps for the other side. So we have an arrow, so we have to put a gun mount on the other side, and that's a 3.7 centimeter gun, twin gun mount. All right, let's cut off some of these pieces. We need a nine, which is the forward range finder. We need the five though. Let's cut off this five right here, which is a gun platform. two of these so there's one oh we do need both of those so cut off the other one here and I will say this is a very interesting kit the plastic is not bad it's it, it glues well it sands well it cuts well so other than a little bit of flash on there it's not too bad so we got that now we seven another gun platform seven that's 21 five wow you're probably yelling at me like it's right there there it is so, part 7, and then we need 12, which is a range finder, which could possibly be small. Uh, 12 is right there, it is kind of small. Okay, so we have that. cutters to cut these little guns off and look at the flash on that guy wow so let us see here one two of those okay singles this 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 guy had a lot of different guns on it oh, that's a weird 
good sprue connection. You would think you would cut off up top there, but you don't. You have to leave a little tab. That's weird. It's going to be a tricky thing to build, I can tell it. Okay, so we have our superstructure here, and then the first thing we need to do is add our first rangefinder. And let's clean up the end. our citadel mold line scraper just so I don't promote bad habits with scalpels so these still a scalpel would work well here but these mold line removers do the job too so this way if a kid wants to build this model he has a reference and he's not gonna get hurt so, so that is going to go, wow that is a tight fit, why wow, does that really go there, you know, wow, I'm going to open that up a little bit, bit of extra thin here. I'm sorry if my mic keeps going low. I tend to talk quiet when I'm concentrating. So if the sound drops a little bit, I'm sorry about that. I had moved the mic closer and I'm hoping that that helps. So that's number one. Alright, number two. So like I say, it's Bismarck week. I started the video off with a little Bismarck history about how it sunk the hood and it didn't really have a whole lot of life. I mean, it only lasted nine months since it was commissioned. Really only went on the one mission. Did sink the hood, which I do have, by the way. Another one of these Lindbergh kits was the hood. So don't have a hood week planned because I can't seem to find one uh, a higher quality model kit in 350 th 1350 scale that I like because I like to do the upgrade kits with it and I'm only finding the upgrade kits that I like in 200 scale so so I'm going to pass on the hood for right now. Could do the war spite, but you know, it's not as dramatic as the hood. So I'm just going to see what comes out later down the road. They're constantly releasing stuff, so all that good stuff. Alright, so let us see these little guns here. That flash is not going to come off without breaking it. So, just going to glue it in there like that. Just hit it with a little extra thin. It could take off that flash. You can also dissolve it. We'll see. So, might have to use the scalpel. Oh, 
ones are tiny. And this one is in 1 350th scale, this turpits here. The hood is, I think, 400. And the Yorktown one I got is 525. But it does come with 32 aircraft. So that's, that's interesting. So I'm curious to see how that works out. I have a whole flight deck full of aircraft. I'm sure it's not going to be clear canopies on the aircraft. Which, now see, yeah, see I should have put those guns in first. Yeah, that does say step three, look at that. Yep. Well, it proves I can't follow instructions, guys. I should quit now. Because I cannot follow the instructions. But with a pair of tweezers, we can manage. Yeah, any plans to build a 1-200 scale ship? Alright. I'm going to address that real quick. I'm going to put this gun in. And I'm going to address why I'm not going to do 200 scale ships. I would love to do 200 scale ships. I would love to do a Hornet, the one that participated in the Doolittle raid with a bunch of B-25 uh, Mitchells on it. But if you look at this side camera here, side camera, if you look at the side camera, if I put this 350 ship here, that's it. That's all you get to see with the 350 ship. If I go all the way out with the overhead camera, you barely, you get the 350 ship in. If I had a 200 ship, it would be over, it would be over like this, and over like that, and then with the side camera, you wouldn't get it all in. I would have to, so at this current time, with this setup that I have, I just don't have the room for the 200 a 200 size ship. I just don't have the room for it. But I will tell you this now, if I do do a 200 ship, it will be a Hornet from the Doolittle Raid because I've always wanted to build that. That is that is my ultimate project that I wish I could do. So I already actually I already have the kit picked out and the upgrade kit and all the aircraft. I just I, I just can't purchase it because I don't have any way of building it so but one day down the road I'm gonna get a bigger workbench area with some shelving or something like that and then you know I could do something a little bit more you know have different because I would love to mount this overhead camera arm on the wall so when I bump the table it doesn't shake <sighs> but I'm not able to move things I'm not able to lift heavy things or move anything due to some injuries so I'm limited to people helping me do stuff and I don't particularly like to ask for help so this gun platform is going to go up here we're going to sand that down a little bit Another cool one would be to do would be a 200 Missouri. <sighs> but since you guys are patiently watching me build this ship on this live stream, I will tell you that I have a 1 350th scale New Jersey 1981 lined up in the works. So there's going to be a New Jersey week, and then it's Bismarck week this week. Then there's going to be Yamada week if a package ever shows up, which is like week 7 or 8 from Japan. So, yeah. So, that's going to happen. And then Yorktown week, of course, when that stuff arrives. And then New Jersey week. And then it's about what is lined up for this. But there's, there's going to be also tanks in, in between that. I'm not just doing all the ships in a row. Like, like next week is probably going to be Yag Tiger week again. Um, 
I'm working on a way to brush paint things. I'm testing a few things because I can't do any kind of aerosol painting, whether it's acrylic, lacquer, or anything. I can't have the aerosol paint. So I need to come up with a way to brush paint everything. So, or have someone paint it. I had bought a mask, but when I put the mask on, I can't breathe. So I can't use a mask. So, kind of, kind of stuck there. Now, see, I'll show you here on this. Let's zoom in here a little bit. You can see there is a huge gap in there that is going to bug me, and I'm going to fill that with some stuff when I'm done. When I once I can't, no, I can't get to it anymore. I want to gap fill that with some surfacer because that that's already irritating me. I know it's not a precision model and gonna win competitions or anything like that, but that gap there is gonna bug me. Thinking of getting the USS Texas from Trumpeter. Yeah, I've looked at the Texas. The Texas is pretty nice. Uh, I believe the Texas is a pre um, North Carolina ship. I don't know. Is I, I I think it may be the same class as the Arizona, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. It might be its own class. I know it's a pre-treaty ship, so it's not decked out as much as like the North Carolina or the Iowa classes. So, but the Texas is nice. The Arizona's nice to do in Arizona would be cool, but again, it's just kits like I like to find are are hard to come by. I like like I like the Trumper kits. I got the Tamiya Yamada kit, and I'm very I've looked through it. I'm very happy with the way that looks. I got the Trump the Tamiya Bismarck kit, and I just did a review video of that that'll come out that'll come out Thursday and I am not impressed with what's in the box for that Bismarck and I am very glad that I have gotten the upgrade kits for that so because I am not happy with what's in that box but you'll see that video that video will come up shortly Thursday tomorrow we'll do our Servitors for our kit bashing and all that good stuff. So we need 10 and 11. So we need a. Well, we need two of these. So there's a 10. These are fire control. Left forward fire control halves, and you gotta put them on the other side too. up here that that's step one and step two and then we need step three is a mast doesn't have a number on it 13 doesn't oh 13 forward mast there it is try to get this in there mast nice little mast structure okay and then we need it looks like four no four five six seven eight of the three searchlights and eight of the singles of the single machine guns so let's get these single machine guns cut out here it's gonna be on camera one two three four five six eight of 
those, and then number six, the searchlights. We have three searchlights. Alright. see these things. It took me a minute to look at it and see what was going on. All these searchlights, well three of the searchlights anyways, are short shotted. So as you can see, oh, oh, I can hold on to it, nope, you can't hold it. You can see there's a huge divot where the searchlight goes. So, three of them are like that. Two are fine, but three have that divot in it. Could fill it. Make it look good, but we'll see how it looks on there. I'm just building this. just to, I do so many complex, complicated builds that it's nice to just take it easy and just stick some plastic together. Just to, just to glue plastic. All right, Del Dare, thanks for thanks thanks for stopping by, and I am enjoying this build. It's nice to mix it up and do something different. So let's see, let's get this guy back, and let's follow the instructions this time and do step one and two first, which are going to be gluing these together that have no location. That's interesting, they have absolutely no location at all. That's funny. Let me know if you guys like this kind of build videos. You know, it's a little bit different and a little more fast paced than, say, the North Carolina because, you know, that is going to be a little bit more detailed because of all the photo etch and all that stuff. So, put a little bit more time and effort into that build just to make sure like that like all my stuff to look good but you know when you just want to glue a model kit together that you know, didn't cost that much at all like I said my wife bought these at an outlet store and they were dirt cheap so just be perfect for some live stream builds. Just glue and plastic. See how you guys like that. So, and it, and you know, it was cool that she found the turpits because it is the sister ship of the Bismarck, and it is of course Bismarck week. So, you know, gonna, gonna be able to tie everything in there and it was cool that she got a Yorktown for Yorktown week so and then the hood will just throw in on a on a week that doesn't really pertain to anything and I hope you guys like the weekly project idea because it seems like it gives me more time I never find stuff like that dirty yeah these kits I want to show you another kit if I can find one I mean, they're not the best thing like this, but like this is the, let me zoom out here, guys. This is the Yorktown, it's, it's the Yorktown she got me. It's Ollie's, they're normally $40, she paid $12.99. It's one to five twenty five scale, but it comes with 32 airplanes. So, you know, it's this Lindbergh, it's made in the USA, so I'm not sure. Um, this is, like I said, this is the, 
same brand, but the Tempest in one three fiftieth. So it was the same price. So she um she did a great job. So let's see here. Let's glue this one on. on this side. If I didn't have a YouTube channel and I didn't like to build things on camera, I probably wouldn't be interested in one of these. Use it for my junkyard, my scrapyard that I plan on building, but, you know, but for this, just to spend time with you guys, just build it on camera. This is perfect. I, I, I love this. This is fantastic. So... My wife's always on the lookout for deals on modeling stuff. She's always finding stuff. She's awesome like that. Alright, so let us put a... Uh, number three is the mask. We're going to go in order this time. So we're going to clean up this. I hate when they do connections on round, on round things that are flimsy. It's hard to. Like if I was building this for like to paint in high quality, I mean there are it's a sprue. And there's an ejector pin right there in the middle of that mast. That would drive me crazy. And that would be a pain in the butt to fill. I'm going to get the main flash off, main mold lines off. Make it look kind of round again. They do look a little flat. dollars of fun that's in my kind of book right there all right so I'm gonna put that checker pin to the back So that's three, and then four is a bunch of these little machine guns. One kind of facing that way. As flimsy as these are, you can like position them in any position you want. This plastic melts extremely well, so you got to be careful on the amount of glue you want to use. So, when they say a dab will do, that they mean a dab will. Tweezers are working great today. Sometimes they don't work so great. But now that I say that, they're going to start giving me issues. I have yet to find a pair of tweezers that I like. So I just. They either don't have enough grip or they slip. 
I have tried tons and tons of tweezers for hobbying, all kinds of stuff, and I have never had any luck with tweezers. Never. So, and then number five is the searchlight in the front. And this one has a bunch of flash on the front. So I'm going to file that off. And I don't know why they didn't have us put this on before we put in the top mount. It's just weird. That's a loose fit. Got to glue it. It just fell right out. Now the tweezers are not going to cooperate. Okay. Little search lights in. You can see that. It's in there. Got a hole in it, but you know, you only can do what the kit gives you. Okay, so now we have these little guns in the back. Now, this had a lot of single anti aircraft weapon on it. It's it's crazy how they designed all these battleships in World War II to be the be all end all for naval combat and. Basically, they became shields for aircraft carriers. They were basically anti-aircraft batteries for aircraft carriers. And aircraft carriers were, were the way to go. And it's just, it's just crazy how, you know, I mean, even Japan building the Yamada and their massive 18-inch guns and they never seen they never saw major combat you know we send our planes in and just devastate everything with aircraft carriers and we use the the battleships and the heavy and light cruisers for anti-aircraft purposes and that's why you see all the refits on these battleships throughout the wars like the North Carolina and Jersey it's like they just up their anti-aircraft weaponry every time they go in for a refit they're just getting more and more anti-aircraft they're actually if you look at the ammunition loads they're getting more shore bombardment ammunition for the big guns and more anti-aircraft stuff for like the dual purpose guns and they were carrying more of that stuff than the bigger ammunition. So, you know, later in the war they realized that battleship on battleship is not going to be a thing like they thought it was going to be. So, you know, but we, we, we all kept building them. I mean, the Iowa class was our ending of that, but we built quite a few Iowa class battleships. The New Jersey is one of them, and I plan on doing a modern version, of, well, 1980s version of the New Jersey when it got its missile battery upgrades, and it has helicopter pad instead of catapults to launch aircraft so okay that should be all of step three so let's take a look at step four how long are we at here almost an hour okay guys I am going to call it because I don't like to go over an hour and I don't want to get into this next step here step four but we have done step two and step three and I will do another live stream 
in the future to do more on this. I'm going to do the whole thing on live streams. Here's the links, guys. To check me out on Insta Media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Check out all the stuff. I try to post stuff more often than I can, as often as I can. I don't do it as much as I probably should. But check me out there. Again, you can visit my Patreon to help support the channel and add more stuff, get more weeks, get more things built, more stuff like this, more live streams. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for stopping by. For Crazy Gamer Models, I'm the Crazy Gamer.